listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 106. We are continuing in the book of Deuteronomy, and Moses is writing his letter to the Israelites, and he reminds them about the first harvest. So when they finally claim the promised land and they harvest this really good land, there are specific instructions on how to collect the first of the crops, the first harvest, and to devote those things to the Lord. And then, this is very interesting, when Moses has the Levite priests get on two different mountaintops, and on one mountaintop, They're going to proclaim the blessings of the Lord God. And on the other mountain, a different group of Levites, they're going to yell out a bunch of curses. So if you do these things that they will list, you're going to be cursed. Now, what sort of things are we talking about? Well, it'll be very clear once we get to Deuteronomy 27. But things like taking money to kill an innocent person, not giving fair judgment to immigrants, and having sex with any kind of animal. So as you can imagine, people who do this list of things probably deserve to be cursed. Let's see if you agree. And we are also continuing in the book of Luke. And Jesus begins to give us some very vivid depictions of the end times, the second coming of Christ the coming of God's kingdom. And it's basically being depicted like a supernatural phenomenon and that it's so sudden. You're sitting there hanging around with your buddy and one minute they're there and the next minute they're just gone, vanished. And that Jesus will come like a flash of lightning coming across the sky. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Deuteronomy 26 A letter to the Israelites from Moses The first harvest You will soon enter the land the Lord your God is giving you. You will take that land and live there. You will gather the crops that grow in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must take some of the first crops you gather and put them in baskets. Then take that part of your harvest to the place that the Lord your God has chosen to be present among you. Go to the priest who is serving at that time and tell him, The Lord promised our ancestors that he would give us some land. Today I come to announce to the Lord your God that I have come to that land. Then the priest will take the basket from you. He will put it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then there before the Lord your God, you will say, My ancestor was a wandering Aramean. He went down into Egypt and stayed there. When he went there, He had only a few people in his family, but in Egypt, he became a great nation, a powerful nation with many people. The Egyptians mistreated us. They made us slaves. They hurt us and forced us to work very hard. Then we prayed to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard us. He saw our trouble, our hard work, and our suffering. Then the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his great power and strength. He used great miracles and wonders and did amazing things. So he brought us to this place. He gave us this land, a land filled with many good things. Now, Lord, I bring you the first harvest from the land that you gave me. Then you must put the harvest down before the Lord your God and bow down to worship him. Then you must have a meal together and enjoy all the good things that the Lord your God has given to you and your family. You must invite the Levites and the immigrants living among you to enjoy this celebration with you. Every third year, the 
is a special year for the tenth part of your harvest that you save for the Lord. You must give this part to the Levites, to the immigrants living in your country, and to the widows and orphans. Then they will have plenty to eat in every town. You must say to the Lord your God, I have taken out of my house the holy part of my harvest. I have given it to the Levites, to the immigrants, and to the orphans and widows. I have followed all the commands you gave me. I have not refused to obey any of your commands. I have not forgotten them. I have not eaten this food when I was sad. I was not unclean when I collected this food. I have not offered any of this food for dead people. I have obeyed you, Lord my God. I have done everything you commanded me. Look down from your holy home from heaven and bless your people Israel and bless the land that you gave us. You promised our ancestors to give us this land, a land filled with many good things. Obey the Lord's commands. Today, the Lord your God commands you to obey all these laws and rules. Be careful to follow them with all your heart and soul. Today, you have said that the Lord is your God. You have promised to live the way He wants. You promised to follow His teachings and to obey His laws and commands. You said you would do everything He tells you to do. And today, the Lord has accepted you to be His own people. He has promised you this. The Lord also said that you must obey all his commands. The Lord will make you greater than all the nations he has made. He will give you praise, fame, and honor. And you will be his own special people as he promised. Deuteronomy 27, Stone Memorials for the People. Moses and the leaders of Israel spoke to the people. Moses said, Obey all the commands that I give you today. You will soon go across the Jordan River into the land that the Lord your God has given you. On that day, you must put up large stones and cover them with plaster. Then write on the stones all these commands and teachings. You must do this when you go across the Jordan River. Then you may go into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, a land filled with many good things. The Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised to give you this land. After you go across the Jordan River, you must do what I tell you today. You must set up the stones on Mount Ebal and cover them with plaster. Also. Use some stones there to build an altar to the Lord your God. Don't use iron tools to cut the stones. You must not use cut stones to build the altar for the Lord your God. Offer burnt offerings on this altar to the Lord your God, and you must sacrifice and eat fellowship offerings there. Eat and enjoy yourselves there together with the Lord your God. You must write all these teachings on the stones that you set up. Write clearly so that they are easy to read. Then Moses and the Levite priests spoke to all the Israelites, and Moses said, Be quiet and listen, Israel. Today you have become the people of the Lord your God. So you must do everything that the Lord your God tells you. You must obey his commands and his laws I am giving you today. That same day, Moses gave these instructions to the people. After you have gone across the Jordan River, these tribes will stand on Mount Gerizim to read the blessings to the people. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these tribes will stand on Mount Ebal to read the curses. Reuben, Gath, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levites will shout the curses to all the Israelites. The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who makes a false god and puts it in a secret place. 
These false gods are only statues that some worker makes from wood, stone, or metal. These things are disgusting to the Lord. Then all the people will answer, Hey, man! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who does not show respect to their father or their mother. Then all the people will say, Hey, man! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who moves the stone that marks a neighbor's property line. Then all the people will say, Hey, man! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who tricks a blind man into going the wrong way. Then all the people will say, Hey, man! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who does not give fair judgment for the immigrants, orphans, and widows. Then all the people will say, Amen! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who shames his father by having sex with his father's wife. Then all the people will say, Amen! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who has sex with any kind of animal. Then all the people will say, Amen! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who has sex with his sister or half-sister. Then all the people will say, Amen! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who has sex with his mother-in-law. Then all the people will say, Amen! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who kills anyone, even if he is not caught. Then all the people will say, Amen! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who takes money to kill an innocent person. Then all the people will say, Amen! The Levites will say, Cursed is the one who does not support all these laws by obeying them. Then all the people will say, Amen! Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. Blessings for obeying the law. Now, if you will be careful to obey the Lord your God and follow all his commands that I tell you today, the Lord your God will put you high above all the nations on earth. If you will obey the Lord your God, all these blessings will come to you and be yours. He will bless you in the city and in the field. He will bless you and give you many children. He will bless your land and give you good crops. He will bless your herds with calves and your flocks with lambs. He will bless your baskets and pans and fill them with food. He will bless you at all times in everything you do. The Lord will help you defeat your enemies who come to fight against you. Your enemies will come against you one way, but they will run away from you seven different ways. Lord will bless you. Fill your barns. He will bless everything you do. Lord your God will bless you in the land that he has given you. If you follow the Lord your God and obey his commands, he will do what he promised. The Lord will make you his own special people, and all the people in that land will see that you are called to be the Lord's people, and they will be afraid of you. And the Lord will give you many good things. It will give you many children. It will give your cows many calves. It will give you a good harvest in the land that the Lord promised your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open his storehouse where he keeps his rich blessings. He will send rain at the right time for your land. He will bless everything you do. You will have money to lend to many nations and you will not need to borrow anything from them. The Lord will make you to be like the head, not the tail. You will be on top, not on the bottom. This will happen if you listen to the commands of the Lord your God that I tell you today. 
you must carefully obey these commands. You must not turn away from any of the teachings that I give you today. You must not turn away to the right or to the left. You must not follow other gods to serve them. Luke 17, verses 11 to 37. Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem. As he left Galilee, he went along the border of Samaria. He came into a small town, and ten men met him there. They did not come close to him, because they all had a dreaded skin disease. But the men shouted, Jesus, Master, please help us. When Jesus saw the men, he said, Go! and show yourselves to the priests. While the ten men were going to the priests, they were healed. When one of them saw that he was healed, he went back to Jesus. He praised God loudly. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan, Jesus said. The ten men were healed. Where are the other nine? This man is not even one of our people. Is he the only one who came back to give praise to God? Then Jesus said to the man, Stand up, you can go. You were healed because you believe. Some of the Pharisees asked Jesus, When will God's kingdom come? Jesus answered, The coming of God's kingdom is not something you can see. People will not say, Look, God's kingdom is here! Or, There it is! No, God's kingdom is here with you. Then Jesus said to his follower, The time will come when you will want very much to see one of the days when the Son of Man will be present again. But you will not be able to. People will say to you, Look! There he is! Or, look, here he is! Stay where you are. Don't go out looking for him. Just be patient. Because when the Son of Man comes again, you will know it. On that day, he will shine like lightning flashes across the sky. But first, the Son of Man must suffer many things. The people of today will refuse to accept him. When the Son of Man comes again, it will be the same as it was when Noah lived. People were eating, drinking, and getting married even on the day when Noah entered the boat. Then the flood came and killed them all. The same thing happened in the time of Lot when God destroyed Sodom. The people there were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, and building houses for themselves. But on the day that Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from the sky and killed them all. This is exactly how it will be when the Son of Man comes again. On that day, if a man is on his roof, he will not have time to go inside and get his things. If a man is in the field, he cannot go back home. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep the life they have will lose it. But whoever gives up their life will save it. That night, there may be two people sleeping in one room. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other will be left. The followers asked Jesus, Where will this be, Lord? Jesus answered, It's like looking for a dead body. You will find it where the vultures are gathered. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 11. For the music director, a song from the Korah family. Use the Alamo, a song. God is our strong fortress and source of strength. He is always ready to help us in times of trouble. So we are not afraid when the earth quakes and the mountains fall into the sea. We are not afraid when the seas become rough and dark and the mountains tremble. Salah. 
There is a river whose streams bring happiness to God's city, to the holy home of God most high. God is in that city, so it will never be destroyed. He will help when morning comes. Nations shake with fear and kingdoms fall when God shouts and makes the earth move. The Lord all-powerful is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Salah. Look at all the powerful things the Lord has done. See the terrifying things he has done on earth. He stops wars all over the world. He breaks the soldiers' bows, shatters their spears, and burns their shields. God says, Stop fighting and know that I am God. I am the highest ruler over the nations, the one who rules the world. The Lord all-powerful is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Salah. Thank you, everyone. That was day 106. Join us for day 107. We'll be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 28. You get to hear more curses for not obeying the Lord and curses for failure. But if you think that was bad, you'll also hear the curse of an enemy nation. And in the book of Luke, Jesus teaches his followers that they should always pray and never lose hope. And gives a story about a judge in a town. And then we'll hear about a rich man who refuses to follow Jesus. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.